Hello! In episode 5 of the series on harmony tension level control in the chord progression, merging Schillinger diatonic symmetric harmony with pitch class sets and Hindemith chord group classification, I'll focus on the identification of the leading tone in a chord and the quality of a root movement and outer part in a chord progression. This tutorial is intended to conclude the series. We'll see some more chord progression examples and the synthesizer orchestral texture based on the progression with sets and chord tension level control. What I want to bring to you is a practical technique for controlling the tension and dissonance level in a modern style chord progression. The approach is combining Schillinger diatonic symmetric harmony with the use of pitch class sets after mapping these onto the Hindemith chord group classification scheme. In this episode I'll discuss various aspects that were omitted from parts 1 to 4. I'll show the identification of the chord structure leading tone, the quality of outer parts and interval ranking of root movement. As always, there will be examples and an application in a short composition. As a reminder of the fundamentals, I once again summarize the context of the tension level control approach. We write a diatonic symmetric harmony chord progressions in the Schillinger system with a diatonic bass part and an upper layer with a series of chords selected from a more or less independent set. From atonal music we borrow the pitch class set approach, that is, all possible chord structures, and focus on the characteristics of the six element interval class vector. We use these sets as source material in the Schillinger chord progressions. We have been grouping the sets according to the Hindemith classification scheme, which discerns six chord groups depending on the values of the elements in the interval class vector. In the previous episodes I looked at 3 to 6 element pitch class sets, a total of 129 sets. Inspecting the interval class vector of each set allowed sorting the sets into one of 6 Hindemith chord groups. The main division is based on the presence of tritone intervals in the chord structures and then on the presence of weak and sharp dissonances. While displaying the diagrams from the previous episodes, I summarized the results. I rejected 12 cluster type PC sets. In group 1 we find a single major minor triad set. There are 8 dominant chord-like sets in group 2. We find 3 sets in group 5 with the augmented chord and the triad in fourths and two diminished chords in group 6. The majority of sets land in the high dissonant chord groups 3 and 4. And in earlier episodes I showed characteristics and voicings of some high potential sets that for instance have a tonal equivalent chord or maximize the number of consonant thirds in the structure. Doing so we've achieved a large pool of modern chord structures to be used in a controlled way in a diatonic symmetric harmony chord progression. As I said before, the main division criterion in the Hindemith scheme is the presence of the tritone interval. Chords in groups 2 or 4 have a non-zero value of N6 in the interval class vector. These tritones contain a leading tone that must be identified from the structure. In his book, Hindemith discerns three cases that I will discuss after playing examples. In previous episodes I demonstrated how to find the root of the structure by looking at the lowest best interval in the structure, for instance the root of the lowest perfect fifth. Well, when the root also is part of a tritone interval, the other pitch is the leading tone. In the example we see two sets from group 4, with the set label and the transposed or inverted prime form shown below the staff. 
Use the PC Set GUI tool on my website for easy inspection of these forms. From the perfect fifth intervals marked in the score, we look for the lowest to find the roots F sharp and E respectively. Both roots are also part of a tritone diet, and therefore the C and A sharp are the leading tones. I show both the Hindemith chord root and leading tone on a separate lower staff. I've been doing that in previous episodes, postponing the explanation until now. This separate staff will help me in designing and evaluating Schillinger diatonic symmetric progressions with PC sets, as I will demonstrate later. In case 2, with multiple tritone intervals, we select that pitch from the tritone diet that has the best, the strongest interval relation to the root. Here we see three group 4 examples. First we find the roots by looking for the lowest perfect fifth, fourth or major thirds in the structures. This yields F sharp, B and B as the roots. Then we evaluate all tritone diets in the structures and pick the pitch with the strongest interval relation to the root. This is based on the Hindemith interval ranking in his row number 2 shown here. The strongest intervals are the perfect consonances. A lower ranking position is assigned to the imperfect consonances, the thirds and sixth, while dissonant seconds and sevenths are the weakest intervals. In case of a symmetric interval relation of a tritone diet around the root, we choose the lower best interval pitch. The example has two chords from group 2 and 4 each. First I determine the chord roots and the results show that some structures are in inverted position. From the tritone interval analysis we then identify the leading tone. For reference, I'll illustrate the same process in a fully tonal context. However, we now find an essential difference with the Hindemith approach. In tonal harmony, we apply proper voice leading to the tritone interval. This must resolve stepwise into a consonant third or sixth. That is not obligatory in Hindemith harmony. Some examples in this book may resolve stepwise, but not necessarily. Hindemith uses the leading tone identification for a quality statement about chord connections in the progression, as we will see next. Root movement quality is also ranked with the interval series in the Hindemith Reihe 2. In the first example all chords are triads, major and minor in group 1 and augmented in group 5. After completing the root identification process, we see root movement by perfect consonant intervals, a descending perfect fifth on the left, a perfect fourth on the right. And we discover an essential difference between Hindemith and Schillinger root movement types. The former classifies both the perfect fifth down and up as the strongest connections. The descending diatonic fifth or seven semitones leap corresponds to the Schillinger positive root cycle R5. The descending perfect fourth is equivalent to a negative root cycle, but Schillinger prefers all positive cycles to the negative forms, which is contrary to Hindemith. In this example we introduce chord connections involving a tritone interval, so we must find both the root and the leading tone, 
as indicated with orange symbols in the score and shown in the lower staff. Hindemith considers the root movement by descending major third or minor sixth the next best connection, so again mixing Schillinger positive and negative root cycles by diatonic major thirds or four semitones. This example continues the root movement ranking with the minor third major sixth interval. The chord in group 2 has both a root and a leading tone, and once again, Hindemith root movement consists of both a shilling of positive and negative root cycle pair. The weak stepwise root movement by ascending major 2nd or minor 7th is illustrated with highly dissonant chords from group 4. Thus we identify pairs of roots and leading tones. Note that in the chord connection on the right we find stepwise intervals for both root and leading tone movement. And again Hindemith lists both positive and negative Schillinger root cycles, as shown at the bottom. The final and weakest possible chord connection is by minor second stepwise motion. The bottom staff only shows the root movement, but the example also contains chord structures with tritones, so there are leading tones involved. Let me summarize the Hindemith chord connection essentials. His root movement technique is derived from the interval quality ranking in row number 2. With perfect consonance, the best root intervals and sharp dissonances coming last. This implies that positive and negative root cycles are mixed, contrary to the Schillinger root cycle approach, where all positive and strong root cycles come first, before the negative weaker equivalents. We've seen the three possible cases for leading tone identification according to Hindemith. In chord connections we must consider the interval quality of both the root and a leading tone movement. Connecting chords within groups 2 and 4 with tritone intervals, the root movement is more important than where the leading tone is going. When resolving a tritone chord into a group 1 or 3 structure, we must control the movement of the first chord leading tone into the target chord root. Remember that resolving the tritone interval itself into a perfect consonant third or sixth is not obligatory. I present a diagram illustrating these chord connection aspects and considering Hindemith chord groups 1 to 4. On the left, when connecting chords within or between the non-tritone chord groups 1 and 3, we evaluate the root movement interval quality. Resolving a tritone chord from either group 2 or 4 into a group 1 or 3 structure involves evaluation of the interval between the roots and between the first chord leading tone and the target chord root. Finally, when moving within or between group 2 or 4 chords, the root interval quality has higher priority than where the leading tone is landing. With these principles we may begin to write longer chord progressions. But Hindemith points at another remaining aspect, the importance and quality of the outer parts. In the Schillinger diatonic symmetric system, we inspect and control the voice leading off and the intervals between the upper layer lead part and the diatonic bass part. This I've pointed out in several examples in episodes 1 to 4 from this series. Hindemith stresses the importance of the two part counterpoint between the outer parts. I will show two examples where we meet a special case for outer parts, namely involving also pedal point. Here I've constructed a progression with a bottom part a dominant pedal point. This and all following examples are Schillinger diatonic symmetric progressions in the E flat Lydian major mode. The tension level control curve between groups 1 and 4 is shown on top. The result of the root and leading tone identification is shown in the bottom staff, that we will not hear in the audio playback. 
When considering the quality of the outer parts, we omit the pedal point, as illustrated here. Listen to this example, where the resolution of the non-diatonic notes in the upper parts is marked. Remember that correct resolution of these altered pitches is not required. The example is of variable density, since we have chord settings between 5 and 6 parts, with occasional pitch doubling. This example was designed with good outer part quality, as expressed by the intervals and direction of motion. I've marked parallel motion with green, contrary motion with orange arrows. The second outer part example contains an upper part tonic pedal point. It is also with a diatonic bass in E flat Lydian, a non diatonic pitch A in measure 5, and with cadential closing. Tension curve and pitch class sets are identical to the previous example. Since the voicing is different, we now obtain the Hindemith roots and leading tones shown in the bottom staff. This example was designed with poor outer parts quality. Also, many non-diatonic altered pitches resolve in the wrong direction. Again, I will play the outer parts in isolation, and hopefully you will be able to discern the poor quality when compared to the previous example. Next I'll discuss two example diatonic symmetric chord progressions, stressing the contrast between many strong versus a majority of weak chord connections. Again we are in the key of E flat Lydian and I've selected pitch class set prime form transpositions and inversions that maximize the number of pitches from the diatonic scale. The setting is in variable density with 4 to 6 note voicings and includes doubling. The tension control curve design is shown above the staff, and after root and leading tone identification we have confirmation of a majority of strong chord connections. Listen to this progression. Here, in contrast, is a progression designed with many weak connections. We are in the same key, using the same PC sets, with positions maximizing the diatonic pitch content, and with tension control curve identical to the previous example. Now, after Hindemith root and leading tone identification, we may inspect the many weak chord connections, by applying the Hindemith interval quality ranking. Hindemith in his book also discusses the creation of cadences and longer progressions in the extended tonality approach. Once again, this is based on the interval quality ranking in row number 2. 
In summary, his text states that tonality conformation in short two to three chord structures long cadences is best achieved with the strong intervals on the left. In longer chord progressions we see more weak and more stepwise root movement as indicated on the right. This is illustrated in the diagram, where the minimum set of chords within or between Hindemith chord groups is indicated for establishing either the tonic or the dominant of the implied current tonality. For example, we need three chords in the major minor triad group 1 for deriving the current tonic pitch class. In group 3 we only need the minimum of two chords to find the tonic. Going from the tritone chords in group 2 and 4 to the left, a cadence may consist of two chords, where the target chord root is the current tonic. A cadence within either group 2 or 4 needs a minimum of two chords, with the target chord root being the dominant. Remember that we are merging the Hindemith and Schillinger technique in this tutorial series, so somehow we have to balance the commonalities and differences between these approaches. Now it's time to integrate these aspects into an example composition. It is a two minute long, moderately slow suspense mood music cue that juxtaposes the strong connection chord progression and a dominant pedal point example. I created a texture with synthesizers and a string section. Listen to the audio while reading along with the annotated score. Let me try and summarize the content of this five episode series. I've demonstrated the mapping of three to six element atonal music pitch class sets on the Hindemith chord group classification scheme, yielding a large pool of modern chord structures in an extended tonality context. These chords are used in Schillinger diatonic symmetric harmony chord progressions where we want to design and overlay a pre-planned harmony tension or dissonance level control curve. I discussed the fundamental aspects of this new combined technique and presented numerous examples of voicings and chord progressions and the application in short compositions. I hope that this series will be a source of inspiration for you to expand your composer's toolset. Experiment with the techniques from this series. Identify the PC sets that best fit your personal taste and style. And use the potential of this approach to create art or functional music. 
such as film and video game music cues. If you like this episode, please hit the like button below. Subscribe to my channel and support the visibility of this series. Visit the website for more content, purchase my books, or contact me in case you would like personal guidance with developing your skills in the techniques presented here. Thanks for watching.